Have you ever cut up a pineapple and thrown away the skin? Stop doing that. Make delicious booze instead. I just said, yes, man, I mean, All right, by popular request, we're gonna make tepache. It's a regional drink from Mexico that brews up really fast and has a low alcohol content around 3%. It's very common to find it sold by street vendors, but it's also really popular as a homemade beverage. Tepache is really simple. You take the outside skin of your pineapple, mix that with a little bit of sugar and some water, and you let it wild ferment using the yeast and bacteria that's naturally just kind of clinging to the skin. First off, all you need is a pineapple and some sugar. You have as many choices on sugar as you want, but I'm using piloncillo. Piloncillo is natural cane sugar. It looks like brown sugar, but it's rock hard. A lot of the recipes that you'll find online for tepache say to use brown sugar if you can't find piloncillo. And the reason why I want you to try this instead of just using plain old brown sugar is because the flavor of this is explosive. It's so much more rich and intense than regular brown sugar, even dark brown sugar. I'm gonna put an Amazon link down in the video description for you to pick some of this up. It's super cheap. I really recommend that you go with this because the flavor is so much better. But it is hard as a rock, so we're gonna to have to soften it. And the other thing you're gonna need is some raw ginger and some cinnamon sticks. So let's get going. So all you need is something to ferment in, preferably something with a little dispenser on it because it's just gonna make your life a lot easier and uh, wide mouth so that you can get all the uh, pineapple chunks in there. But just like with any other brewing project, make sure you sanitize your vessel. So now you have all this delicious pineapple and you could put that in the jar if you want to, but why would you do that when you could just eat it? Because really the whole point of tapache is to make use of the inedible parts of the pineapple, the skin and also the core. And then with your pineapple, just fucking eat it. What else are you gonna do with it? Mm, it's like a treat for my mouth. Another way I like to treat myself is with cool t-shirts from our sponsor, Into the AM. So if you don't know, Into the AM makes all of these really cool graphic design t-shirts. There are dozens and dozens of different designs and I wear them all the time because they are the most comfortable t-shirts I've ever owned. They're crazy soft, the graphics are really cool and the price is right. And if you use my link down in the video description or in the top comment, you get 10% off of everything on the website, including if they're having any sort of promotions going on at the time that you go. So check out the link below if you want to get some awesome graphic tees, some very comfortable underwear, or any of the other stuff they've got on their website. All right, the second to last thing we need to do is throw in some cinnamon sticks because the combination of pineapple and cinnamon and sugar is pretty Frickin' delicious. And the very last thing we need to do is toss in our piloncillo. And again, I highly recommend that you do not use brown sugar and that you get some of this stuff instead. If you can't find it, Amazon link, it's a couple dollars. But if you're impatient and you wanna just go ahead and get it going, you can use brown sugar. Eight ounces by weight. Since this is a little brick, we're gonna go ahead and pre-dissolve this in some hot water just to speed things along. Now that you've got your sugar and water super hot from being in the microwave, you need to let this sit and cool to room temperature before you add it to your pineapple, otherwise you'll kill all the yeast and bacteria on there. So let this cool down. We're gonna go ahead and top this up the rest of the way to about a gallon with some cold water and uh, then we'll just leave it. All right, so before I put this thing to bed, I almost forgot. I want to go a little bit further and I'm going to put some pectic enzyme in there so it'll break down all the cell walls in the pineapple to help release all the juice so we can get all that flavor and maybe a little bit of extra sugar.
All right, so to close this up for fermentation, you actually don't even need an airlock. You could just take a piece of cheesecloth, throw it over the top and secure that with a rubber band, or you can just close the lid and even lock it down because this is gonna make enough of an air gap for the CO2 gas to escape. So you don't have to worry about it blowing up. But if you leave it open like this, that's gonna allow more wild yeast to kind of drift in and possibly help out the fermentation. Well, uh, this is day three and this stuff is really working off very well. Here's something to know about wild fermentation. Because you're not putting in a massively robust colony of yeast, something like this, and you're just using the yeast that's on the actual fruit itself and the bacteria, it takes a little while for it to start establishing itself and building the colony that's actually going to do all the work. So for the first day, maybe day and a half, you might not see anything going on in there except a little bit of wispy bubbles just around the edges. But then you'll go to work and when you come back, it'll look like this. When I first saw it, I thought, holy shit, is that mold? Because it was all this white stuff. But upon closer inspection, I could tell that that was just really, really tiny, tiny, fine bubbles. And, uh, you know, looking around in there, there's no mold. The smell is fermented fruit. And it, it just, it actually smells very enticing, very juicy, uh, very pineapple-y with a little hint of cinnamon. And so I tried some yesterday just to make sure I wasn't making poison and uh, it was fantastic. Still a little bit sweet, a little bit tart, and it has that kind of fermented funkiness to it. Not real strong, but very different than a straight up yeast fermentation. So if you've never had kombucha, I highly recommend you go get a bottle from the grocery store and try it so that you'll understand what I'm talking about when I refer to that kind of SCOBY fermented funkiness. When I say SCOBY, I'm talking about the symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. That's the same thing going on here as what's going on in your kombucha. And speaking of kombucha, if I can, I'm going to try and harvest the colony from in here and make my own kombucha with my wild SCOBY. So, Kind of excited about that. It sounds like a fun challenge. If I'm successful, look for that in a future video. For those sharp-eyed viewers, you may have noticed this right here. Let's zoom in, shall we? That is gonna be in a future video. It's basically a much stronger version of this. I had an extra pineapple and a whole bunch more sugar. What was I supposed to do? Before we taste this, I just wanna thank all of my Patreons, all of these folks right down here. Thank you guys so much for uh, sticking with me and also for giving me so many different ideas and insights and motivation. I really appreciate it. You guys are keeping my lights on. I had a little baby taste. I had a shot glass full of it last night and it was really good. So I'm interested to find out how it's actually matured in the last 24 hours. All right, so first off, look at that color. That is fantastic. First aroma is pineapple, but you get a little bit of cinnamon in there too. And a little bit of ginger. So that's cool. I'm really glad that came through. Oh man. So yesterday it was still about 50-50 with the sweetness and the tartness. Today the sweetness is way down. It's a lot more tart, a lot more makes your mouth water but not in a puckery kind of way, just like biting into a fresh piece of pineapple. You get that little little hint of cinnamon. It's interesting, even with two sticks of cinnamon in there, it's not crazy strong, punch you in the face cinnamon. It's slightly effervescent. Can't even detect the amount of alcohol in here. I mean, you could tell there's alcohol in it, but I couldn't tell you for sure. You know, like maybe it's just extra bubbly. Right now, I imagine because I'm still detecting some sweetness, there's probably about 2% ABV right now. Now keep in mind that the longer this stuff sits and ferments, the more tart it's gonna get over time. Not only is the sugar gonna get used up by the yeast, but you may even have an acetobacter infection in there that's gonna take hold and start converting the alcohol, that little 3% alcohol that you've got in there and turning that into vinegar. So my advice 
is to finish this up in about four or five days. After that, it's gonna get really sour. This is really good. You know what it could use though? Chili peppers. Uh, so that's not gonna last very long. And what was your what was your opinion for the addition? More ginger or something else? I said yeah, something else like spicy or sweet, not not ginger because that's. Just... I said chili pepper, and she said. Mm. Yeah. Make this <laughs> if it's hot outside and you or mowing the grass, or you're gonna have a barbecue, or you're gonna have people over, whatever. Make some of this a couple days before, and it's it's gonna be exactly what you needed. It's refreshing, it's sweet, it's tart, it's delicious. And it's got a tiny bit of booze, so bonus. Ugh. This one here is the strong version of this one over here. So if you really wanna see what's gonna happen with that, you need to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it so that you can get notified when I post new content. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. And if you have any questions, comments, you wanna share your own recipes for tapache, go ahead and post those down in the comments down below. All right, thanks for watching. Talk at you later.